So far I covered three products from Valkyr and they all amazed me in terms of performance, budget, in terms of price and everything that went uh, into the, that ratio, let's put it that way. Here we have, um, let's say, the most upgraded, the most advanced version of all the products that I covered in terms of AIOs. This is Valkyr Sin 360, addressable RGB LCD AIO. And yeah, it comes with an LCD screen 2.4 inch, which gives you a possibility to place either pictures or videos on it. And it has a TF card inserted inside. So what you could do is you can upload anything that you desire. The thing is we have a packaging that is outstanding. So when we consider Wind SL125 and Dragon Fan 360, the Sin 360 goes into that same bucket with a box that is outstanding, OCD free. We have quite nice arrangement inside the box and all the other stuff that really brings a joy when you buy a product and you do the unboxing yourself and it gives you that, that special meaning, right? But regardless of that, uh, we're going to talk about specifications, of course, of the Sin360 uh, benchmarks and I'm going to break down the uh, application that you need to install on your PC to control the screen and everything towards it. So let's check out the specs first. We have the same fans that are on Dragon Fan 360, so it, X12, uh, 120 times 120 times 25 with uh, fan speed going from 800 to 2150 RPMs. Uh, they connect uh, to a motherboard for the speed control with PWM 4 pin connector and addressable RGB header. Basically, they daisy chain together so you don't have three cables running out of it. You have only one cable and then you connect each, so PWM and addressable RGB to your motherboard to control the speeds and to control the addressable RGB with dedicated software that is on your motherboard, for your motherboard, sorry. The maximum airflow is 80 CFM, maximum uh, static pressure is 3.14 millimeters H2O and maximum noise level is 29 decibels. Now let's go to the pump block top. We have a copper cold plate material, aluminum radiator, 425 millimeters tube length, cold plate dimensions uh, are 60 times 50 times uh, 3 millimeters, FEP corrugated braided sleeve tubing, Dimensions of the radiator uh, is 397 times 120 times 27. So when you place everything together, fans and the radiator, we have 53 millimeters of thickness. The weight of the radiator is 3.62 kilos and, well, TDP is 300 watts. Compatibility, all Intel sockets and all AMD sockets except for the Threadripper. So it covers basically all. And inside the box you get the Valkyr Sin 360 addressable RGB uh, pump block top with the radiator tubes and everything else. Uh, X12 E fan addressable RGB, three of those. Uh, Valkyr hub and instruction manual plus accessories to mount the Sin 360 to your uh, processor. Now, the hub is totally pointless uh, with Sin 360 as well as the Dragon Fang 360 because the hub has six, eight, I don't know, something like that, six or eight uh, connections for PWM and addressable RGB. And you connect everything directly to your motherboard because it they daisy chain together and you don't have excessive cables running out of it. So the only cool thing with the hub is that you guys get a possibility to connect all the other fans and control them through the hub. So that's really cool from them to actually acquire something like this inside the box, even though it's basically not needed. Now let's go through the mounting mechanism and how you connect the Scene 360 to your AMD platform. So first of all, remove the retention brackets that are originally on your AM4 or AM5 uh, motherboards. Place the threaded standoffs on the holes that were used for the retention brackets and then you place the plates on them. You have four Valkyr thumb screws that you place on those to lock the plates into the position where you have that, um, they had some funny name, I can't recall it right now, but regardless of that, you use that plastic bit. It's more like a, not a screwdriver, but kind of resembles to it, but it goes around the thumb screw to tighten it up a bit more than you could do it with your fingers. And after that, what's there left to do is place the SYN360 pump block top on that 
part because it has a pre-applied thermal paste and you do get additional thermal paste inside the box. That's all there is to it. The rest that you need to do is daisy chain three fans on the radiator and you have additional cable that runs out of it. You could, if you wish, connect them individually, but there's no point because they are all doing the same purpose, cooling down the liquid inside the radiator, well, basically blowing air through the radiator to cool down the liquid. So daisy chain them and you have one cable running out. After that, you have to connect the USB type C from the LCD screen to your USB 2.0 on your motherboard. And you have additional uh, PWM and addressable RGB header running from the pump block top which is really straightforward. You just connect it to a three pin addressable RGB header and a four pin PWM. That's it. Now let's talk about the application. The software is called Mid Cool and it has loads of numbers when it comes to version, but uh, we have a hardware information, device management and game PP toolbox. But let's first start with the hardware information where you can literally see all the details that you have right here talking about the actual specifications of the build. Don't mind the monitor, this is just my, let's say, benchmark monitor. It doesn't have to do anything with the benchmarks uh, when it comes to gaming, but regardless of that. So we have sensors that actually give you some, is it a curve? Okay, we have a curve as well, which you can adjust for uh, CPU temperature, GPU, motherboard, uh, primary hard disk, memory disk, or you can go with real time and you can check out the processor, graphic card, motherboard, primary hard drive, and memory stick temperatures, which is outstanding and it gives you some sort of an insight about everything. So let's go to the device management. Here you can see a Valkyr E-series cooling for the parameter display. And this is how it looks. This is how you get the visuals of everything. Now, unfortunately, here we should be seeing the graphic that is currently showing on the LCD screen, so you get some sort of a visualization of it, uh, but it doesn't show for some strange reason. Let me just do this. Oh yeah, we could do and expand it to the uh, entire screen. So we have here caution, do not use conjunction with the Sagittarius control software. Okay. Then we have apply your settings, screen display content switch, and you can here adjust the font color. Also, what is possible and since I changed the orientation of the pump and everything on my uh, PC build, you can adjust the screen display direction, which means that it gives you an option to rotate the LCD screen horizontally to the proper orientation as you wish and as you desire, depending on the tubes and where do they uh, end up. Then we have the uh, hardware and software decoding. And this is where you access the TF card. So you have, uh, possibility to browse and when you do that you go to the you can access the TF card since uh, it automatically saves it to a TF card so if you upload something and you want to upload something to your LCD screen it automatically uploads it to the TF card then you can access it but here in the standard Windows Explorer you can't do that and let's see view built-in space does it do anything there's a problem with the drive. Okay, so this is something, here we go. Now you can access it. There was something wrong with the TF card, but regardless of that, uh, it, uh, it works now. Here you have possibility to adjust the content on uh, the screen display. So you can add multiple ones. Uh, you can add the time, you can add the sensors, you can adjust here. If you decide to go with the sensor model, you have time model, sensor model, then you can adjust uh, number of sensors, so you could go with two for instance, temperatures, CPU, GPU temperatures, so it shows multiple thermals on one screen and uh, this is how you get it. So if you decide to go with some graphics, the numbers and the letters will be over those graphics. In some cases, in some scenarios, if you have certain graphs, uh, graphics, videos, photos, whatever, uh, the font will be over that and you will have a dedicated space. Of course, if you decide, you can always go down and just remove completely the background image and leave the terminals as it is. Uh, then again, it, I think these are seconds and each five seconds, let's see if I could change that. Yeah, I could change the number. So 10 seconds for the sensors, five seconds for the time. And this is how it displays and, change every, and changes 
everything when we're talking about that. There's also a possibility to change the time mode and that's all there is to it. Basically. And then we go back, uh, game PP toolbox, uh, stress test where you can stress test your CPU, GPU or uh, system memory. Then we go to benchmarking where you could do some benchmarks 1080p, 2K, 3K, 4K. Uh, easy fan to adjust the fan speeds. This is quite cool because it gives you an option to access the fan speeds from your motherboard BIOS and full speed, adjust each setting and curve, uh, do whatever. Let's see. You can, of course, change the name. It doesn't have to be on Chinese. Let's see the settings. Exactly. Here we go. So, yeah, that's really cool. And Aedia 64 skin, you can do that as well. And that's all there is to it. And finally, going through the application and what it can do, well, basically the software with the SYN360, let's check out those benchmarks that I promised at the beginning of the video. So the components that I am using here, we have Be Quiet Shadow Base 800DX. I really want to mention that because this is an outstanding airflow case and uh, we have no restrictions when it comes to airflow and performance. Then we have AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D and we have uh, ASRock B650E Tai Chi Lite. Uh, now, in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition, the CPU went up to 88 degrees Celsius while the clock speeds went up to 4825 MHz. The GPU, even though it's irrelevant, uh, if you're just watching this video and you didn't check the Shadow Base 800DX video, which I do suggest checking out, uh, we have here a gain word RTX 4070 Phoenix GS and the thermals went up to 47 degrees. Now Cinebench R23. Uh, this is interesting because uh, we go from 78 degrees up to 81 degrees Celsius. And that's outstanding because this uh, CPU can go really up high and the Syn360 does cool it down quite nicely. Now for the CPU clock speeds. From 4950, it goes around that, and then it drops in the last four runs, 4925 megahertz, and finishes at 4950 megahertz. The Cinebench scores 26,476, and then it went above uh, 26,500, and it stayed there somewhere, grabbing the average of 26,480. Now for this CPU and this configuration, that's quite all right. And I don't have anything left to say about the performance part because it does really bring some stability to the scores and it uh, doesn't vary that much. I, I had some scenarios where the processors went maybe even thousand uh, Cinebench points in difference. So yeah, there's that. Now, some some sort of a conclusion, Valkyrie Sin 360 is definitely one of their premium AIOs in terms of cooling, in terms of fans, in terms of radiator, in terms of uh, CPU block with, the, with an LCD screen. Now, the software could be done a bit better, and I won't say it in a negative part, but comparing to some others, uh, this could have been done better, and I'm really missing those GIFs. It could give that a uh, bit better, you know, design and possibility to place GIFs in all the other terms. Adjust the thermal indication on the screen. It's fixed on that position and if you want to place uh, that thermal indication on the LCD screen, you either have to have a picture or video that has an empty slot right there so it can be clearly seen or as you can see right here, if the thermals are in the middle and the graphs are going or some sort of video or going in the background. In some scenarios, it might be hard to see. Really gives you an option to customize the LCD screen to your liking. That's outstanding. The performance is there and I can't argue with that. It really does do the job outstandingly good. It really is user-friendly, really straightforward. You access everything through that. It gives you loads of options, but you've seen everything there. The performance, I already stated. So I won't continue and repeat myself again. But yeah, that's it. Valkyrie Sin 360 gives you the performance that you need on a high-end CPU up to 300 TDP, 300 watts TDP, and everything is there. So guys, if you like the packaging, and some of you might laugh, but some of you will understand how it feels to unbox a new product that actually has this type of packaging. This is brilliant. I love it and I have nothing left to say. 
The links uh, for the Valkyr Sin 360 will be in the description below when they will be available at the end of this month apparently. So I've heard from the Valkyr guys. Uh, so you can check it out as well as the other Valkyr products that are reviewed so far. So do go back to those videos and check it out where I will update everything of course accordingly. So yeah, there's that. If this is your first video and first Valkyr product, uh, if you don't mind, go check the other ones as well. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell so you don't miss future content that will be dropping basically as it is so far on a daily basis. Thanks, see you soon.